Hey there everyone and welcome to another King's Road video. At the beginning of this year I looked through all the dragons and I did a deep dive on each one talking about how they worked and how they can be useful. I then did a video looking at the top 10 dragons for PvP. In this video we're going to look at the top 10 dragons for PvE. So this is going to be the final video rounding off that series completely. If you want to check out the other videos there are links to them in the description. There are 39 dragons in total that are not gold dragons because, you know, they're not for combat. So of those 39, we're going to look at the 10 which are best for PvE. Now, talking PvE compared to PvP, in PvP, uh, like, attack of dragons, they'll die quickly. There's certain things, pet damage are not, is not very good. PvE, a lot more dragons can actually really shine. Uh, they get a lot better there. Now, slight disclaimer uh, that may twist my bias a little bit. Right now, dragon stats are pretty low. So the attack of dragons are not as good as they would be. Things die off faster. You know, they're just not dealing that much damage compared to how they should be. And pet damage kind of comes through a bit stronger. You'll see me just mentioning this um, throughout the video when it's relevant. Um, but generally speaking, attack of dragons, they don't do incredible amount of damage compared to uh, your damage anyway. So even if the dragon stats were balanced properly... Um, it's kind of like comparable to someone who's just reached the end game. They've got some scaroons, um, you know, a few scaroons maxed maybe. They've got the mythic gear, but they haven't really advanced beyond that point. At that point there, the attack and dragons deal good damage. But once you get beyond that point, the attack and dragons, they won't do, uh, like, they'll do sort of a small percentage of your damage. And they're not actually as significant. So attack and dragons, they do kind of fall behind. It's only really the best attack and dragons that stand out. You only see there'll be like a couple on this list of the top 10. Really, it's the other stuff which comes through and gets really strong. But anyway, that's enough for talking about that in general. Let's move into the top 10. At number 10, we have Ignis. Ignis is this really nice balance of dealing both damage output and also having a lot of defense. So it's basically an attacker dragon, and it's dam the damage it deals is comparable to attacker dragons. Now bear in mind, it is pet damage, which has its pros and cons. So where pet damage is low, then it's not going to be doing so well. Right now, with the dragon stats being low, but pet damage is scaling to the enemies, so it's still, still good. Um, Ignis actually stands out really nicely as doing loads of damage. So, you know, it depends on the situation a bit, but basically the damage output is pretty good and it's comparable to attacker dragons. And because Ignis is a tank dragon, it has four times the health, so it tanks really nicely. Now, it doesn't have any actual skills which help with its defense, so it dies easily compared to other tank dragons. But the way how it fights from range and stuff, it's basically an attacker dragon and it's just a tanky attacker dragon. That's basically what Ignis does. Um, so it creates the area which boosts fire damage, boosts your movement speed as well. To be honest, end game character, the damage output that you get there and the extra move speed, it doesn't matter that much in combat. So it's more the case of just Ignis is just doing this for itself where it just buffs its own damage output. Um, it's a pretty simple dragon to start this list off. Um, it's just, you know, it tanks, it does good damage. That's how it is. Number seven, we move on to a another pet damage dragon. So this could go a lot higher up the list, but I put it at number seven, uh, number nine, sorry, because I'm not fully convinced by it. Um, it, like I said, it really depends on the situation. So it's a support dragon. So similar to Ignis, it will tank better than attacker dragon, but it has really good damage output, and because that's pet damage. It once again depends on the situation, but when pet damage and pet health is high, Zulong becomes amazingly good, creating these two minions that will do great damage um, to lots of enemies and tank well, and that means that Zulong tanks in a similar kind of capacity to Ignis, because even though it's got half the health, it has these minions which soak up a lot of damage and get in the way, it may even tank better than, uh, than Ignis. So that's where it sits, really good damage output. Um, tanks very nicely and stuff when pet damage and pet health is high. It also deals with a lot of, um, sorry, a lot, when there's a lot of enemies spread across a, an area because its skill hits a big area and also the minions will attack multiple enemies. So it's not just like one dragon attacking one enemy. So that's where Zulong is. Another really good damage output dragon that is going to tank reasonably well. At number eight, we have Celestial, a personal favorite of mine. This one is really good for supporting you. By itself, it doesn't keep itself alive, it doesn't do any damage really, but it buffs you incredibly well. Uh, 
healing you, shielding you, giving you um, a damage buff of 25% that's practically constant. Um, it just basically boosts your damage output and keeps you alive a bit better. Celestia itself, like I said, it can die off fairly easily. Um, it's a support dragon without any other buff stuff. It's not an attacker dragon, so it won't die off stupidly easily. But um, you can keep it alive with cupcakes if you want to. And otherwise, this just is a really good way of boosting your damage output. There's not a whole lot more to say about it, um, other than it helps the party. So it's not just for you, it's for the whole party. Um, it does the shielding from a fair distance, and that healing as well. Uh, but yeah, really cool dragon. I really like it as support, um, for parties especially, and for dealing extra damage output. This is one of the better dragons for sure. Going on to number 7, now we have a tank dragon. Now this is an exceptionally good tank dragon, and from here on you're going to see really, really good dragons. Those first three I mentioned, like, they're, they're definitely very good, but they have some kind of ifs and buts about them. Um, from here on, we're going to see extremely powerful things. So in Flare, this is a tank dragon which is ultimately the tankiest tank dragon in the game. It's very important to note at this point that in PvE we can use cupcakes to keep our dragons alive. In PvP that's not an option, but basically any dragon which can't heal itself, you can actually heal your uh, with your cupcakes. Skills don't do it, but the cupcakes are very easy to come by. They'll just, you know, easily fully heal a dragon. So it's a very easy way to do battles if you have a good tank dragon to just send that in have that soaking up all the damage, and then just keep healing it with cupcakes. And Inflare is the best target for that in the game, because what Inflare does is it gives itself this 60% damage reduction, takes a little bit of time, um, but once it takes hits, it then triggers this, uh, this skill, and it seems to. Now, I may be completely wrong with this, but I tested it a few times, and it seems that it just triggers the skill, and then it becomes permanent, a 60% damage reduction. And not many other dragons can really compete with that. Like, it's not like the biggest buff in the world, but because it's constant, it just means it will it will be really hard to kill and cupcakes keep it alive well. That's basically what Inflare does. Otherwise, it will, you know, race around, knock down enemies and stuff, do a tiny bit of damage. But to be honest, that damage is pathetic. What you're using it for is like being a super tank that gets in the way, that you keep it alive with cupcakes. When you want to do a ridiculously tough, um, say you're doing the master maps, um, sorry, the challenge maps, or whatever, and it's just way too hard for you, Inflare can do the job for you. For number six, we go to the opposite end of the spectrum and we go to the highest damage output attacker dragon. So, Avalanche, this is a personal uh, favorite of many people. Basically, it is the boss killer. Um, it has a very strict order of skills where it creates the uh, um, ice on the ground, which boosts the water stat by 50%, which works for itself. And that also means that it deals uh, triple damage for the second skill, which then means that does a ridiculous amount of 54 times its basic damage. Now, most skills, they do like up to like six times or something like that. Avalanche just does 54 times. It one-shots a bunch of bosses. It's really good against any, like, fire bosses where it does, you know, extra damage. The problem with it is it only hits a single target. And also, it's an attacker dragon, so it can die off fairly easily. You kind of need to keep it alive. It's situational, but in those times when it can be used, it's very, very good for killing bosses. And otherwise, um, if you've got, like, a map-type uh, event and you're slowly going through it, Avalanche will give you great support from like just behind you. So, you know, you need to stay in front, you need to uh, protect it, but it will take out an enemy every 10 seconds, basically. Um, and that's obviously what you're looking for in an attacker dragon. Uh, if, if it's not going to be like great damage output in general, then it's good to have one which is like going to kill enemies uh, when it uses its skill. At number five, we've got Golden Scourge. This is one of my personal favorites and whether or not this is better than Inflare is a bit kind of like up to, you know, personal opinion. Like, this top 10 in general, like, I could have put some of them in a different order. It's very difficult to decide what's better. I mean, from those previous two that we looked at, Inflare and Avalanche, which one is really better? Hard to say. Golden Scourge here. This is another super tanky dragon. Um, it's one of the few dragons that goes to level 150, and so for that reason, it has higher health than any other dragon. Um... Uh, yeah, any other tank dragon. It has, like, basically double the health of other tank dragons. 
and also it's got this buff which um, which increases its defense even further. So it tanks exceptionally well. Compared to Inflare, it's not as consistent because Inflare gets the permanent defense buff. Gone Scourge, it gets a, you know, just for a period of time. Now, what pushes this on over the edge for me compared to Inflare is that it also gives you a defense buff of 40%, which is exceptionally good on um, Knight in particular. Knight likes tank. Um, the way Knight will use tank dragons is slightly different to the other classes because they'll go in in close range and the tank dragon will just kind of be next to them. Golden Scourge is one of the tank dragons which works really well for knights because it will buff them um, by being next to them and the damage reduction stacks with whatever damage reduction they get from other things. So the protector skill just at like 10 out of 99, it doesn't even have to be 99 out of 99. Um, that gives you 60% damage reduction, which stacks with the 40% from Golden Scourge to make you literally invincible. And so that lasts 14 seconds. It happens every 25 seconds. Um, so if you can, uh, well, maybe you want to align your protector for when that's not there, but like, you get what I mean. It stacks on top of your defense buffs to basically make you invincible. So for Knight, Golden Scourge is just insane for keeping you alive. Um, this is also another great tank dragon in general for cupcake support. It doesn't heal itself, so it will slowly do die over time, but you can keep it alive with cupcakes. Um, yeah, exceptional tank dragon. In fourth place, we've got Aurelian. Now, this is very similar to Celestial that we saw at number eight. Um, I would say Aurelian is slightly better. It's hard to say, though. It really depends on the kind of situation you're in. They do very similar stuff, so Aurelian will heal you. It will buff your damage. Um, it doesn't buff your defense. Um, and it's slightly less consistent, it's not a permanent thing, but the damage buff is very slightly higher, and the important bit here is that Aurelian heals itself too, so it's very, very good at sustaining itself, um, just, it, it tanks most things, because it's a support dragon, it hasn't got the health of a, of a tank dragon, so it's not like invincible, but as long as the dragon stats are good, then Aurelian does survive the vast majority of things, um, on top of, you know, supporting you. And then it does reasonable damage output. The second skill, doing the projectile um, in an area, six times basic attack damage, that's actually quite decent. Um, it also has the uh, extra hit, um, extra damage over time on in that area, which does extra damage. So overall, you know, it does reasonable damage, uh, like I said. So yeah, really good support dragon. Um, just going to do a slightly better job than Celestial in the majority of cases um, because it's more well-rounded, keeping itself alive and that kind of thing. Now in third place, we have the only other attacker dragon to make it the list, to the list. Avalanche was the other one. Like I said, Avalanche was like great for single target damage. You keep it alive and it takes down bosses. Dark Heart and Fracture, they have the same moveset. So we're going to, uh, they're both together here. Fracture is the slightly better one because it's got slightly higher stats. Um, but yeah, they're really, really good and actually work. Um, so the damage output is very good. They're on the upper end of attacker dragons, which means that um, they will actually help you out with damage. Um, like I said at the beginning of this video, attacker dragons in general, they're just lacking slightly in damage output when you're like in the sort of super end game. Um, but it's reasonable damage, let's let's face it. So Dark Heart and Fracture, they will be doing good damage. They do a lot of big air of effect damage. Uh, they knock enemies back away from them. Um, they pull enemies to a sudden location away from them generally because they put it on an enemy and then it pulls other enemies to that. Um, and they do the rooting and stuff. They control the enemies well enough that it means they survive and also they heal themselves. So similar to the dragon which we just looked at, Aurelian, um, they will keep themselves alive reasonably well. Not as well as tank dragons, but well enough that you don't have to worry too much about them. And Dark Art and Fracture also do great damage. So compared to Aurelian there, they're dealing more damage, but they're not supporting you by boosting your damage or healing you or whatever. So that's where Dark Art and Fracture sit. I'm not going to go through all the moves on them because uh, there's quite a few, uh, but basically they're all big air effect damages. Um... Uh, skills that do a lot of damage and the one thing I will note about it is that they add a lot of extra effects and in some cases they can actually lock a boss um, so the boss doesn't do anything at all. Um, you can see this in dragon raids when you use Dark Heart of Fracture there. When they use certain skills it will disable the dragon, the enemy dragons so they don't do anything at all 
Um, that is definitely an unintentional thing, um, but it happens reliably there. In PvE, against some bosses, it's the combination of like knockback and root um, and that kind of stuff that it actually can disrupt them, so it can either send them flying or leave them disabled on the spot, not doing anything at all. So I've definitely had cases where my Dark Heart has completely soloed a map by um, just disabling the boss permanently, <laughs> so it won't do anything, uh, which is a funny little thing that it can that it can do. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's a Dark Heart and Fracture, the best attacker dragons, I would say, in the game. Pretty self-reliant, and a lot of cool extra effects and air of effect uh, control stuff. In second place, we have Motura. Now, Motura might be one that people are a little surprised that it's here in second place. It's not so well known. However, if you look, watch my videos where I covered each of the dragons, you'll know why this is so good. This dragon is just crazy damage. Like we said that other other dragons they don't do um you know, don't do that much damage output that it's not that helpful and stuff. Uh Motura, this is on the same level as Fracture and Dark Heart to a particular area in front of it and it's also a support dragon. So this is going to um, basically survive really well uh, because it's it's a support rather than a tank dragon and do a lot of damage output to this area in front of it. The skills, um, they do just a ridiculous amount. Basically the first one does up to 100 times basic damage, the second one does up to 20, uh, 20 times basic damage. They do loads of little hits. Um, it also roots enemies, uh, which is, you know, kind of handy in some cases. Um, and yeah, it, it just does really, really well. And because it's a support dragon, it is possible for it to survive and you heal it with cupcakes. Not as well as on tank dragons, but since the damage output is way higher than on tank dragons, uh, Motura just does, uh, just does well there. Now, I may be hyping this up a little bit too much. Like, Motura is not crazy, but it certainly it hits that point of like having really good damage output as well as being tanky enough um, that you can keep it alive and it will be very helpful in battles. So that's Matura, and that's my second place. Before we move to first place, uh, let's have some honourable mentions of ones which didn't quite make the list for one reason or another, or they have their own niche use. So Embersol is the first one. This basically is a really good attacker dragon. The problem with it is that a lot of the damage is pet damage, and that's, well, basically all the damage is pet damage, so it really depends on how good pet damage is. Right now, like I said, dragon stats are generally low, so pet damage is kind of standing out as being good. So Embersol is a great dragon, but if they ever buff the dragon stats, then Embersol will probably drop down quite a bit. So it's a decent attacker dragon, I just don't want to put it on the top 10 because it's, it's too much uh, reliance on pet damage. And being an attacker dragon compared to a couple of the other ones which we had on the list that were pet damage, those were like support or tank, so they actually survive well, whereas Ember Soul doesn't survive well, and it's got this unreliable um, kind of damage uh, that isn't quite as good as uh, what the other attacker dragons have. The next honorable mention is Manticore. Now this one is the best dragon for dragon raid, uh, sorry, for guild raids. Uh, that is to say for um, knights and wizards, archers, at least in the current guild raid, um, using a dragon can mess up the boss that you don't, you can't then hurt it properly. Or I can't remember exactly uh, what the problem is there. But anyway, be wary if you're an if you're an archer. But for wizards and knights, Manticore is the best, and that is because its skill, where it bites uh, the enemy, marks the enemy and makes them take 1.25 times damage from all attacks. So this isn't just from their attacks; it's also from your attacks. So it's similar to the like Mark of Death. Uh, from Archer, which makes an enemy take extra damage from everyone. Um, Manticore does that. So it's a case of, you know, dragon stats, uh, dragon damage is not exceptional. Um, so when they can boost your damage, that's really, really good. And compared to like Celestial and Aurelian, which they boost your damage, but like not necessarily consistent in every way, um, Manticore, it boosts the damage output and makes you even better. So I get my highest uh, damage runs on Guild Raid when I use Manticore, but outside of that very niche use, um, it doesn't really stand out as a good dragon. Another special mention, which I should definitely have in here, is Harlequin. Harlequin is an exceptionally good dragon in PvE, but 
it's only for the particular case of it has a very low cooldown. So you can use it very frequently and it doesn't get hit by enemies, it just basically sits next to you. The damage output from it is terrible, um, but it gives you a constant heal over time. So this is a really handy extra effect to have that we can basically use all the time. Um, the cooldown on it goes so low, it can go down to five minutes at Mythic. Um, and yeah, basically use this frequently. Uh, it gives you little prisms and stuff, which is very nice, and it heals you. So very good to use, but doesn't really make a top 10 list. Next we have Winter Claw. So Winter Claw is a brilliant dragon and it went really high on the PvP list. It's definitely a, a good tank dragon. It survives well. You can heat it with cupcakes. Um, it like stuns enemies and everything. The thing is, it's just not quite as good as the other things there. I think the tank dragons of um, in Flare and Golden Scourge stand out better uh, because they tank better and you can keep them alive with cupcakes better than Winterclaw does, just a little bit better, and that meant that it was, it was just off the list. It didn't quite make it. I think some of the uh, unique things which the other ones offer on the top 10 list is better than what Winterclaw can offer, but it's definitely up there as a really good tank dragon. Similarly, we have Scourge, which is it was just off the list. It's a good tank dragon in general, does similar stuff to Golden Scourge, just not quite as well in PvE um, that it didn't quite make the list. And lastly, Crystalis. Similar case again, uh, where it's just it was just off the list. Basically, it's a decent enough attacker dragon. It does pretty good damage, and in terms of what you want from an attacker dragon, like one that does decent enough damage, Crystalis definitely hits the mark. Um, one of the skills is a bit awkward. It hits around it, which, because it wants to be attacking from range and being an attacker dragon, if it engages with enemies, it's going to die pretty quickly. Uh, that skill doesn't get used that much, but the other skill is a decent enough air of effect skill that does good damage and you know chrysalis in general if you use it you'll find that it works well it's a good dragon just didn't quite make the list lastly we have what i believe is the best dragon in the game for pve and you may have guessed it this one for me was just hands down it is the best there's no no question about it lynx lynx is so ridiculously good at surviving it's practically impossible for enemies to kill uh, the only case where it can be killed is if it gets knocked down or knocked back because it will disable the healing skill. But <laughs> the healing skill lasts for 20 seconds and it's got a 25 second cooldown. So there's like a 5 second window where it's not healing up. But at the rest of the time, it is just healing up so fast that enemies can't kill it. This has been true even with the dragon stats kind of falling off a little bit over time. Lynx is still basically impossible for the enemies to kill and it goes in really nicely fighting the enemies, pulls them into it, which helps you, um, you know, that's what you want from an, a tank dragon, is for them to get in the way, and so pulling the enemies in is brilliant. Um, it damages all the enemies around it, and the damage output is actually really, really good. So this just about makes it onto, uh, like, the lower range of what attacker dragons do in damage, and of course it's got four times their health, and it's healing to the point that it's basically invincible. So the damage it does is decent enough that it can very easily like just solo basically any content in the game. Any PvE content, you can throw links out there and it will just do it for you. Now, there are a few cases where it can get overwhelmed by too many enemies or whatever, or you know it's gonna get knocked back, knocked down, which then cancels the, uh, the, the buff that heals it. But in the vast majority of cases, it is gonna be just ridiculously good. Uh, Lynx is so good for PvE um, that, yeah, it's hands down the best dragon in the game, I believe, for PvE. So that rounds off this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and the series in general. If you haven't seen the other videos, I do highly recommend going to watch them, because in this video, I wanted to make it shorter. I think I made it slightly shorter than the PvP one uh, by not talking too much about the skills on the dragons, because that's all covered in the previous videos. So if you want to have a look at how the dragons work, and not just read it off the screen as I, you know, things have popped up in this video. Um, go watch one of those other videos or all the other videos to see how the dragons work and where they can be useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video at some point.